Welcome to the world of Compututor, and welcome to the world of word processing with Superscriptsit. I'm Brent Seltzer. Over a century ago, an American inventor named Christopher Scholes put together the first practical typewriter. It was a giant step forward, this mechanical device, that allowed almost anyone to create a page of text that looked like it had come from a printer's press. Why, in one clatter of keys, not only did the pen become mightier than the sword, it became a lot faster. Within a few years after the patent was awarded on the first typewriter, Scholl's invention began to fill up secretaries' desks from New York to New Delhi. In fact, in an effort to promote the value of the typewriter, some folks with some early Madison Avenue type hustle managed to convince a Midwestern newspaper man and novelist to write his next novel on the novel new machine. Well, that riverboat journalist's name was Samuel Clemens, better known to the world as Mark Twain. And the story he typed on Scholl's miraculous machine in world-class time became a world-classic adventure of a young man named Tom Sawyer. Well, in much the same way, the typewriter took the printed word to new heights. So has the computer program word processing taken us technologically even further. Because when you unwrap the superscripts at word processing package, you'll meet your own personal and professional editor and layout artist. So, stash all your old correction, fluid, scissors, and paste, because the superscripts at word processing software does the work for you. Up until now, you typed, corrected, and retyped. Now, you'll process words. Oh, your fingers still press those same familiar keys, but all those other tasks that had to be done by hand, like making corrections, moving text, can now be done by command. As you enter your text, you'll find program features make editing on the electronic page easy. You should watch this Compututor program all the way through one time first, before you try and work your program. Then, set up your computer, even if only temporarily in the same room with your video cassette machine and television, so that you can watch and participate on your machine at the same time. And for all of these editing tasks, your Superscripts at Word Processing program provides the help you need right up there on the screen. Menus list commands, and what are called help screens are just a couple of keystrokes away, available to you as you work. Because you won't be able to slip through the screen of your home television set to get the hands-on experience at the machine, I'd like you to meet my assistant, Das Metz. Hey, how you doing, buddy? All set to help our friends learn superscripts it? Terrific. Now, here on the videotape, he'll play your part. Of course, you'll appear live in your own home version. But by watching my friend, you'll be able to see what he's doing, which is what you should be doing, usually. In fact, Das Mitz happens to be my business partner, and he'll be helping us out as we work our way through Superscriptsit. We've been together quite a while since our spreadsheet days when we first went into business together and created the Mitfits Glove Company. You know, come to think of it, we have to give our business a name. You got any ideas on that one? Well, think of something, will you? Oh, you got an idea. Ah, uh, it's like a charade. Okay, there are two words in this idea. And uh, the first one, first one, uh, baseball, softball, glove, mit, mitt, mitt. Oh, oh, okay, I got it. Now, what about the second word? Second word uh, sounds like, oh, okay, sounds like uh, hits, hits. Sounds like hits. Um, uh, oh, fits, mitt fits. We'll call it the Mitt Fitz Glove Company. We've come a long way since then, and our word processor has helped. In fact, we have a marketing report to send out to a stockholder, and we'll show you how it's done in this video. First step, though, is to set up and load the Superscripts at Program. And, of course, I have to make a costume change. By the way, keep your superscripts at owner's manual standing by. From time to time, I'll be making page references so you'll know where to look for the good stuff. Any program you use requires a play-safe approach, and superscripts it is no different. Before installing your new word processing program, you should make two backup disks. You'll store your original disk away in a safe place, if you can, Keep one of the backups in another location to be double safe, or just store it with your original. 
and you'll use the second backup copy as your working copy of Superscripsit. First, turn on your printer. And then, because your Superscripsit disk includes the Tristos operating system, place it in drive zero, the lower drive. And then boot up by turning it on. Good. Leave the Write Protect tab on the original, so you can't possibly write on or erase it accidentally. Format three disks. You'll use one of them for a data disk for our letter and report to stockholders, and the other two will be for our Superscripsit backup copies. Don't forget to enter the date in the appropriate fashion, with two digits in each place. If the number of the day or month is a single number, type a zero first. The format command from the Tristos Ready screen requires you to type format and press the enter key. Then type in the drive number, in this case one if you have two disk drives, and place a blank diskette in the upper or number one disk drive and press enter. Then move through the screen prompts, naming and assigning a password if you wish, and choosing the density, which is usually double, and the number of cylinders, which is usually 39. Or you can simply press enter all the way through this process. When you have three freshly formatted diskettes, it's time to back up your superscripts at original. At the Tristos Ready screen, type Backup and press the Enter key. Now follow the screen prompts. If you have a two-disk drive Model 4 machine like we do, you'll enter zero for the source drive. Do that now and press the enter key. And you'll enter one for the destination drive. That's right, and press the enter key. If you have only one disk drive, type zero for both prompts, and Tristos will tell you when to switch disks. Tristos will always ask you if you're sure you want to back up onto the disk, so simply press Y and the enter key. And the backup process begins. It takes a few seconds, so be patient. I know it takes a little time, may seem boring, but be patient. After all, it's still faster than doing all this by hand, isn't it? The entire backup and verification process usually takes about a full minute.
little stretch is a good idea. Almost. Make your two backups of the superscripts at original and put the original and one backup in their safe spots. Put the working copy in drive zero and place your data diskette in drive one. Now let's take a bit of a tour of superscripts at its opening screen. To do that, you must load the program. From the Tristos Ready screen, type scripts it. And press enter. The red light on drive zero will come on as the model four goes into action. And on your screen, you'll see the super scripts it word processing menu with all the primary options for your choosing. A few words on menus. Have you ever gone to a favorite restaurant because you like the choices on the menu? But after a while, you get bored because the menu rarely changes. Well, Superscripts, it always gives you choices with a menu. However, there are several different menus to choose from. And as we go along, you'll learn how to pick and choose which command from which menu. Just to get you started, let's have a look at the main menus in Superscripts. It. That'll give you some idea how to move around within the program and also give you a hands-on idea of the power of your Model 4 Superscripts at Word processor. The opening menu lists a series of choices with the first letter of the command emphasized. Press O for open a document right now. And the program will ask you for the name of your document. Type in test colon one. The colon and one will tell the machine that you want the document to be set up on the upper disk drive. If you have only one disk drive, don't bother with the drive designation and your document will be created on the same diskette as the one holding your superscripts at program. Now, press enter and you'll see another menu. Listing some different options. Don't bother with the options menu right now. I just want you to see it. You'll be filling out those blanks in the next segment. So now you can cancel this operation by pressing the break key in the top right hand corner of the main cluster of keys. You'll need to press the break key because we are canceling before actually starting the document. Now you are back at the opening menu. We won't do a complete tour of all these menu choices but let's hit a couple more. So press D and you'll get a display directory screen asking you which drive you want to display. Press zero and you'll get a list on your screen of all the files for the superscripts at program contained on the diskette in drive zero. When you're done looking at the disk file display, press the break key to get back to the main menu. Now press the choice S for System Setup. During this video, we'll be using the standard superscripts at defaults. Defaults are standard responses to questions asked by the program. But I want you to know from this System Setup menu that you can change the standard arrangement of various parts of superscripts at, customizing it to your special needs. For instance, Maybe you have a particular need for narrower than normal margins. And with the printer options, you can customize the way your printer creates justified lines. Now, those are the lines of your text that are squared up along the right as well as the left margin, like printed pages from a typesetter.
Press the break key to cancel out of the system setup menu and get back to the list of choices on the main menu. You can see for yourself the other choices include a proofreading mode, the ability to squeeze a document into the smallest possible space on your disk to save room for more documents, and converting your superscripts file into a plain vanilla type file called an ASCII file. That could be read by other programs that don't understand the special form of your word processing superscripts at file. Now, exit to Tristos by pressing E, and this is where we'll be picking back up in the second section of this video. In the next segment, we'll be showing you more of the ropes, like cursor movement and correcting mistakes without using white goop. And we'll start writing a letter to go along with that marketing report to the Mitfits Glove Company stockholders. Rewind this segment of CompuTutor and review it before we begin to show you how to use word processing in the next segment of CompuTutor. When my partner Das Smits and I prepare a letter and report to our stockholders to tell them just how well the Mitfits Glove Company is doing with the written word, as opposed to, say, sign language, because so few people speak sign language. What? You speak sign language? You're kidding, I didn't know that. How about a little demonstration? Very little demonstration. Nearly none at all. Sign language. Next, the computer. <laughs> Sign language? That's your idea of sign language? Real impressive. Re do you speak any neon sign language? Huh? Do you? We're kind of a smart... What? Two, three. Welcome back to CompuTutor and using Superscripsit. In any kind of computer program, moving the cursor is about as basic as you can get. So that's what we'll be talking about in just a few minutes. But first, if for any reason you've turned off your computer, place your Superscripsit work disk in drive zero and boot up your machine by turning it on. Get the Tristos Ready screen by entering the date. Now, whether you have turned the machine off and have rebooted, or if your machine has been on all this time, you are ready to type Scripsit and press Enter. If you have two disk drives, you'll want to keep your data diskette in drive one and the Super Scripsit program in drive zero. If you have only one drive, you will be keeping your word processing data files on the same disk as your superscripts at program files. We'll be assuming you have two disk drives during this video. So put that extra formatted data disk in drive one so we can use it to hold the letter we're about to start. When you loaded the superscripts at program a few seconds ago, you got the main menu on the screen. And now I want you to select O for open a document. Type in the name of our document, letter, L-E-T-T-E-R. And you'll see the characters appear right where the cursor is pointing. To let Superscripts it know that you want your letter document stored on the diskette in drive one, tack a colon and the number one on the end of the file name. So it'll read letter colon one. And now press enter to get to the opening options menu. Let's fill in the blanks and at the same time, you'll get a quick demonstration of some very basic ways to move the cursor around the screen. To move down to the next line, use the down arrow key. You'll see the arrow keys on either side of the main section of the keyboard. The up and down arrows are on the left side, and the horizontal arrows are on the right side. The flashing cursor will be at the line marked Author. Type in your own name. We can skip the operator and comments lines, so just press the down arrow key to get to Printer Type. 
Good. The line for printer type will let you direct the superscripts it program to work with your specific printer. You'll find the various printer types listed on page 14 of the superscripts at reference manual. The DW2 automatically placed on the printer type line is the default and stands for the Radio Shack Daisy Wheel 2 printer. The DW2 printer works with a particular pitch. Pitch refers to the size of the type on the printed page. Of course, that will influence how the page gets laid out. If you have a different printer, you may need to make some adjustments in the pitch setting in this options menu. Consult your reference manual on page 14 or feel free to give your local Radio Shack computer center a call. The lines per page entry is already set at 54, and that's fine. Now, use the down arrow to skip down to the pitch line. As I mentioned, pitch varies depending on your printer and the size of type you want to use. For the pitch entry, we are using a letter quality printer. So, stick with the P default that comes with Superscripsit. If you have a Radio Shack dot matrix printer, use 8 or 10. And by the way, with a dot matrix printer, you won't get the double underscore function. Also, feel free to consult the manual or your local Radio Shack computer center. The line spacing and header and footer entries are fine, so it looks like you've finished filling out the options on the Open Document menu. Check all the entries on this Open Document Options menu and use the cursor arrows to move around on the screen if you need to retype anything. On page 15 of your Superscripts at Manual, you'll find an explanation of how to make any corrections. For instance, use the up arrow key to get back to the line where you typed your name. And if you have to, use the horizontal keys to get the cursor on the first letter of your name. Now, hold down the Shift key and press the Clear key, which is located just to the right of the Enter key, and your name will disappear from the line. The Shift and Clear combination erases everything on a line to the right of the cursor location. Now, type out your first name and your last name, leaving out your middle name. Move the cursor to the space between your first and last name and press the key on the right-hand side of the keyboard marked F1. F1 puts you in the insert mode and superscripts it just like the parting of the Red Sea will automatically open up to make room. Now, type a space, your middle name, Fitz, your middle name is Fitz, Das, Fitz, Mitz. <laughs> Fitz is a great name. I, I love Fitz. I only wish I had known sooner. Okay, now press F2, normally the delete key, to close up the ranks on the insertion hole. Now, delete your middle name by first getting the cursor back to the first letter of your middle moniker. And press F2, the delete key. In fact, press F2 however many times needed to remove your middle name character by character. Now you have some basic cursor and editing skills, and we haven't even started typing the letter yet. You know how to insert and delete and move a line or character at a time. Check all the entries on the menu, and if you're satisfied, press Enter to lock these values down and attach them to your letter document. Now that you have actually opened up the Superscripts at Editing screen, you can see the standard screen page you'll find whenever you're working on a document. Let's start our letter and I'll give you a tour. One quick chore before we start typing. Because all these lines won't be indented, we must remove the indent tab, represented by the capital I in the line of symbols at the bottom of the screen. The indent tab is a great idea. It automatically indents the first word of a paragraph. I'll explain more later, but right now, hold down the control key and press T. Now, type a space where the capital I is. 
and press the Enter key. Type out the date as you would want it to look at the top of the letter in the block style right up against the left-hand margin and press Enter. The cursor has jumped down one line and shifted over to the left margin. Just like on a typewriter, an Enter key carriage return moves the cursor back to the left-hand margin. However, in Superscriptsit, the carriage return is an actual character embedded in the text. You'll see when you type some more of this cover letter to our marketing report that Superscriptsit will automatically advance the screen as you type. And you'll mostly use the carriage return function of the Enter key only to end paragraphs. That automatic finding of the right place to break a line of text is called wraparound. Let's take a look at that carriage return, or some people call it the paragraph character. Hold down the control key just to the left of the space bar and simultaneously press the letter V for view. This makes these special editing marks visible. And you'll see, right at the end of the date, a paragraph character and the characters VW in the lower right hand corner for view. Now, let's start on our letter. You've already got the date typed in. Do the address of our stockholder as you see Das Smith's doing it on your TV screen and use the enter key at the end of each line using the shift key for uppercase letters. And don't worry about making mistakes. We'll be making some mistakes ourselves in a little while we'll tell you why. Also, you can use the arrow keys and the F1 and F2 keys to fix any errors. I know everything seems all jammed together right now, but we'll form out the paragraphs in the next segment, and these carriage return characters will make that easier to do. Also, please have a look at the series of symbols on the bottom of the screen. It looks like a ruler, doesn't it? Marked off in inches? That's why it's sometimes called the ruler line. Well, in Superscripts it, it's called the tab line because those plus sign symbols mark the points where you have tab stops. As you type, you'll see a second cursor following along to show you how close you are to a margin or a tab stop. It's called the ghost cursor. Depending on the pitch you selected, which will determine the size of the characters on the printed page, you'll see the ghost cursor more or less follow your regular cursor as you move along the line. However, the ghost cursor is actually indicating where you are in the document when the document is printed out. We'll get into the details of the tab line during the format work in segment three. Type in the address of the Mitfits Glove Company using the enter key at the end of each line. Oh, and do the same for the salutation.
Now, type in the first paragraph, and notice how the words wrap around the end of each line when they come up against the right margin, automatically moving to the next line when needed. Don't use the Enter key till the end of the paragraph. Now, type the second paragraph about our new line of sequined and beaded gloves and use the Enter key at the end of the paragraph. Now, I told you a little earlier we'd be making some mistakes on purpose, and now you'll find out why. There are a few of them there, and whoops, it should be projections, not protections. Let's correct that. Use the up arrow to move up to the line with the incorrect word, and use the right and left arrows to get the cursor right over the offending letter T, so you can change it to a J. Now, superscripts it operates in overstrike mode all the time, unless you press the F1 key, like you did in the options menu before we started this letter. So, since you are in overstrike mode, and the cursor is right over the letter you want to replace, press the letter J. And it's as simple as that. And you don't need any white goop either. I see we've left out the word we in the paragraph we just typed. Move the cursor to the first letter of the word can. And press the F1 key to get out of the overstrike mode and into insert mode. Type in the word we and then type a space. The words split apart to let the correction slip in there. To close up the line of text, now press 
F2 to get out of insert mode. I also notice on the same line that Dasmitz typed the word quite twice, so we better delete the extra one. Here's where you'll pick up some fancier ways and quicker ways to move the cursor around the text on your screen. Superscripts, it divides cursor movement into simple and advanced. The simple cursor movement you pretty much know already and mostly means just using the arrows to move a line or a character at a time. You can use the shift key in combination with an arrow key to amplify the power of the arrow. For instance, holding down the shift key and pressing the up arrow key will move you to the very beginning of your document. Try that right now so you can get the feel of it. And now, do the opposite, using the shift and down arrow key to amplify the downward movement and put the cursor at the end of what you've typed so far. Superscriptsit calls any of the arrow and letter key moves advanced cursor movement. For instance, Hold down either the up or left arrow key an instant before you press the G key and the cursor will move to the previous paragraph. Don't hold the left arrow key down too long before pressing the G key or it will automatically start moving your cursor. On the other hand, an arrow key of the opposite direction, down or right, either one with the G key, would move the cursor to the next paragraph. Now use the advanced cursor command to move one word at a time, instead of one paragraph at a time. Press the left arrow and the W key to move to the previous word. The right arrow with the W key will move to the next word. All these various cursor commands are described in your superscripts at reference manual starting on page 41. Now that you've experienced these various cursor commands, position yourself in the letter at the extra word quite. Once you get to the beginning of the word, you can delete it. Press the F2 repeatedly and watch it get nibbled away character by character. If you look on your superscripts at quick reference card, you'll see an organized reminder list of the most used commands for your superscripts at program. Once you've absorbed the concepts, this will be a good way to tickle your memory about a command without searching through the more detailed reference manual. Now, move to the end of what you have typed so far with the shift key and the down arrow key pressed together. Finish typing out the letter right through the signature blocks.
Now that the information has been corrected and all the words are pretty much where we want them, I'd like you to save this version of the letter. Uh, be it a letter, a report, or even a shopping list, or whatever kind of document you're working with, it is always referred to as a file. So whenever you're working with a superscripted file, you should save it to disk frequently, just in case there's a power failure or some other problem. There are two ways to save your document file to disk in the superscripted program. Both involve holding down the control key in combination with pressing a letter key. You'll use the control W combination to write the document to disk and continue your work. And you'll use the control Q combination to quit work and Superscripts will automatically save your work to disk before allowing you to shut down. Until you save it, your valuable text is as volatile and perishable as a puff of smoke. I'd like you to use the control Q combination right now so I can show you the way Superscripts it handles an exit from a job. When you give Superscripts it this control Q command, you'll see and hear some disk drive action as your Superscripts it preserves your work, and then you'll get the main menu on the screen. Except there's one difference. There's now a new option, R, on the menu. That will let you return to the project you were on. That's the easy way to get back to the letter, but this time, I want you to learn about calling up an old document from scratch. So choose the O option. Good. Type in the name of your document and its disk drive locator, letter, colon, one. And press enter. Up on your screen, you'll get the familiar options menu. But this time, it'll contain all the items you had entered when you first opened the letter file as a new document. Your name and your printer type and pitch, for instance. Just press enter and you'll get the letter document back up on the screen. You're doing very well. You can maneuver the cursor, end a paragraph, delete mistakes, insert words, save a letter to disk, and load it back into the computer again. In the next segment, we'll pretty up the letter, so it'll be fit to send out to a stockholder. Rerun this segment for review and reinforcement, and then move on to segment three. Hey, I wanted to tell you, I thought you did a great job typing out that letter. I mean, really first rate. For a while, I was a little afraid I'd have to bring in my new secretary, Ms. Dolly Palmdexter, because she's to... Oh, Ms. Palmdexter, good to have you with the firm, my dear. We have... Just, hey, will you relax? Just take it eat. What? I appreciate your feelings, but we have the superscripts to teach our friends here. Let's get back to what we have to... Just relax, will you? Just calm down. Get hold of yourself. Well, I'll tell you, there's always another option to this. I mean, you could write her a little note, you know, or maybe even using superscripts. It would, oh, what's this? First draft. Oh, you did it by hand. <laughs> See, by hand, you did it by... We'll get back to this a little later. Welcome back to Compututor and using superscripts. In case you've turned your machine off, reboot your computer, and when you get the Tristos Ready sign, type in Scripsit, and then type the name of your document, letter, and type a colon, and the drive designation, one. Not only will you get superscripts it back up, but also this little shortcut will automatically load your document. Now that we've got our letter all typed out correctly, it's time to format it. And the first thing to do is decide how the paragraph should look. Now the Mitfits Glove Company policy manual says, all paragraphs and letters should have a blank line between them and the first sentence in each paragraph should be indented by 10 spaces. Oh, and lastly, the Mitfits Glove Company letters are printed with narrow margins to make them stand out as different from reports or other types of documents. We'll squeeze this letter in by five spaces on each side. To do this format job, you need to get some details on the superscripts at tab line. 
You remember from the last segment how the ghost cursor follows you along, indicating where you sit on any given line in relation to the margins and tab stops. The open parenthesis mark is the left margin, and the closed parenthesis shows the right margin. A plus sign indicates a tab stop, and a capital letter I sign, which we took out a little earlier, shows a paragraph indent. The numbers tick off inches on the printed page. No matter what pitch you have decided to use, Superscriptsit adjusts for that type size and moves the cursor the right number of ticks on the tab line for each character. On the very bottom line, called the status line, Superscriptsit lists the document you are editing, the page number you are on, which line on that page, the location in inches of the ghost cursor on the horizontal line, the pitch size you chose when you opened the document, and the line spacing, single space or double space, or whatever you chose in the open document menu. You can find the tab and status lines explained in the Superscriptsit manual on page 17. Or you can find some of this help in a built-in system that Superscriptsit calls Help, or the Help screen. Press Control H. And you will see on the screen a display of available commands. There are seven pages of information, and you page through it by pressing the up or down arrow keys. Now, whenever you finish using as much of the help screens as you need, you can break out of help by simply pressing the break key. Now get to the first line of the document, which in this case is the date, using the shift and up arrow key combination. We're going to edit the tab line, and that's easy to do. Simply hold down the control key and press the letter T for tab line. Now your superscripted program has given control to the ghost cursor on the tab line. You can tell that's the case because the only cursor you see is on the tab line. Press the right arrow key and the ghost cursor moves to the right on the tab line. And the left arrow does the opposite. Now use the left arrow key to put the cursor directly on the open parenthesis and press the space bar and the left margin mark will disappear. Press the right arrow key four times and put a new left margin there, an open parenthesis. And now position the cursor on the right margin, and don't go too far. Then count five spaces to the left with the left arrow key, and place the right margin close parenthesis marker at that spot. Use the shift key and the left arrow combination to move the cursor to the left edge of the screen and move the display to its new position. The text on your screen has shifted over to your right by one-third. This is one of the scrolling features of Superscriptsit, and I'll be giving you all the details on that in the next segment. You have a couple of ways to go now in order to get out of this tab line editing mode. Now, don't do it, but if you press the break key right now, it would wipe out all the tab line editing you've done. If you press the Enter key, it would lock down all the changes you've made, and when Superscriptsit returned you to the regular editing mode, the paragraph at that point in the text would be reformed to match the new tab line. But since this is the standard format for the Mitfits Glove Company letters, you should save this tab line for future use, so you won't need to go back over this procedure every time you want to do a letter for the Mitfits Glove Company. Type the letter S. Then assign a number to this particular tab line. Let's just use one, but you could pick any number from zero to nine. Now the disk drive will go into action, saving the tab line. And now you'll be able to recall this set of margins and tabs anytime you want by going into the tab edit mode with control T and typing the characters R and one. On pages 17 through 20 of the Superscriptsit manual, 
you'll find a detailed step-by-step -step explanation of how to set and save and recall tab lines. Superscriptsit has returned control to the regular cursor and you are back to editing mode. However, the letter, except for the date, still has the original margins. Whenever you change the tab line after entering text, you must perform an operation called a block adjust to get the rest of the paragraphs to adopt their new tab line margins and indents and tabs. That's why, when you're completely familiar with the Superscriptsit program, you'll want to set up all the margins and tabs for the entire document right from the beginning. That'll save you this step of going back to adjust to a new tab line. We've done it this way so you'd see how the parts of the program work together. Also, you're going to experience for yourself the great advantage of a computer word processor over typewriter and paper. In the old days, you'd have to type the whole letter over again to make such a big change in margins and paragraph indentations. With Superscriptsit, you're going to revise the entire document with just a few keystrokes. Now remember this method of working with blocks of text because it'll come in real handy when we do our report on the new Mitfits Glove Company product lines and sales estimates. First, you must mark the beginning and end of the block of copy you want to revise. Now use the key combination, Control S, for start. And an open bracket will appear in the text to show where you've started the block. Also, the text all the way down to the end of the file is displayed in reverse video. That indicates the entire document has been selected. Since we are adjusting the margins for the entire letter, we don't need to mark the end of the file. Press the Control B combination, and you'll see some choices on the status line. Pick A for Adjust, and the margin changes flash through the body of the letter. Problem is, the body of the letter still needs the Mitfit standard paragraph indentations. Move to the beginning of the first paragraph in the body of the letter. And use Control T to get into the tab edit mode. Now use the arrow key to put the cursor over 10 notches. And press I to place a paragraph indent marker. That'll be a 2.7 on the tab line. Now remember how you saved the tab line last time? And when you think about it, it's obvious we'll need two tab lines to deal with the two different paragraph formats in the Mitfits Glove Company letter style. So save this tab line by typing S and the number 2. And there, the first paragraph has been indented. Now move to the start of the second paragraph in the body of the letter and press the Control S combination to mark the start of a block. Then move the cursor to the end of the third paragraph. And press the Control E combination for end of block. Now, put the cursor anywhere in the first paragraph of the letter. This paragraph will be a model for the defined block. Now you're ready to press Control B for block action and the letter A for adjust and the body of the letter will be paragraph indented. There's one thing left, and that's to put blank lines between the various elements of the letter. Now, that's easy. Just move the cursor to the beginning letter of the first word of each line. You want to add a blank line above. Then press F1 to go into the insert mode. Then press the Enter key as many times as you need blank lines. Then press F2 to go out of the insert mode. 
When you move the cursor to the next location where you want to add blank lines, repeat the process. So let's add two blank lines between the date and the stockholder's address. and two more lines between the zip code and the Brent Seltzer of the Mitfits Glove Company. And two more between the zip code here and the salutation. And one more between the salutation and the first paragraph. Now add one blank line between each paragraph. And one more between the last paragraph and the line thanking you in advance. and two more blank lines between thanking you in advance and my signature block. And another two between President and Das Smith's signature block. Now to make things neater on the page, let's use the hyphenation feature. That'll make the paragraphs look tighter. This is another block-oriented function, but let's use a different way to mark the body of the letter this time. Get the cursor in the first paragraph of the body of the letter. And press the Control-X combination. Across the bottom of the screen, a list of choices will appear, and this will be much quicker than the method of pointing at the start and end of the block with the cursor. As you can see from the menu at the bottom of the screen, you can automatically mark the start and end of blocks of various sizes, W for word, S for sentence, G for paragraph, P for page, and E to mark the text from this point all the way to the end of the letter. Press the letter G, and an open bracket sign will appear at the beginning of the paragraph where you have your cursor. Now here's another quick way to move things along. Just keep pressing G until each paragraph in the body of the letter has been chosen for the defined block. Now to take action on this block you've chosen, you must put the end marker in place. Choose B on the menu for block action. And now you see again a menu of options on the status line. Pick H for hyphenation. Superscripts-it will move the cursor to each line where space is available because the justification part of the program will insert extra spaces to make the line break evenly along the right margin when it's printed. The cursor then will be giving you a choice of where to break the word it's pointing out. Use the left or right or down arrows only to position the cursor to a place to hyphenate the word. Then type in the hyphen and superscripts it will squeeze the first part of the word into the line and move you on to the next choice, taking you through the entire block you've selected. Now if you decide it won't look good to break a word, uh, like breaking the word phone here, just press enter and superscripts it will take you on to the next hyphen opportunity. I don't think we need to break up gloves. Let's press enter again. Well, it looks like we won't have to press any others to hyphenate. You've come a long way, formatting text, indenting paragraphs, resetting margins, and realigning the letter to them. Save this version of your letter with Control-W. Like Control-Q, 
This will save your document. However, it will leave your document up on the screen and save you the time of going through the opening menu and loading it in again. And remember our Compututor concept of reinforcement and review. Take some time to review this segment of the video before moving on to segment four. What? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I said we'd review this, didn't I? Okay, well, a little note to Miss Palmdexter. To Miss Palmdexter. Well, hello, Dolly. I have adored you from afar. Oh, that's good. Very touching. Gazing across the room into your thumbs. I, into your thumbs? You gaze across the room into her... Gazes across... Into her thumb. We'll be back in the next segment of Compututor. Into her thumbs, huh? Oh. idea was a good one, but I don't think it quite worked out. And frankly, I think you ought to try it again. Later, we'll try it, not at this moment. At least. Welcome back to Compututor and using superscripts. Let's just do a little playing now, so you can see how fast you can move around in a document using some big scrolling and cursor commands. Notice on your quick reference card the section labeled Moving the Cursor. You can see how the movements progress in a pyramid style from simple arrow key moves of one character at a time to shift combination commands to move you in larger increments and down to the next set that I want to show you, the arrow key combination commands. Superscripts that regards the up and left arrow keys is the same in this situation, moving you back or up through the text, and likewise for the down and right arrow keys, moving you forward or down through the text. In the last segment, you used a right arrow key and G to move a paragraph at a time. Now, use a right arrow key and V to move down one video page, which is 22 lines. Repeat the move with the up arrow key and V to get back to the same place. This is called scrolling. Whether you can see it on your screen or not, all your text, or at least a big chunk of it, is in the memory of the computer. By scrolling through that material, you simply choose which portion of it you want to see through the window in front of you, your screen. Scrolling, of course, is taken from the ancient practice of rolling documents on a scroll, like this one. You can also move the cursor to a specific line or page or character in your document. Press any one of the arrow keys at the same time you press the letter L. A prompt will tell you what line number you are currently on. It will also allow you to put in what line number you want. Let's say we want line number 6. So type in the numbers 0, 6, and press Enter. And there you are, in the sixth line of the letter. Another way to move the cursor quickly around the screen is by using the tab function. It's important when we do the tables for the marketing report in the next segment so we should get into it now. Let's modify our block style letter even more by putting the date over toward the middle of the page. I'm going to show you how to use the tab function just like on a regular typewriter. So get the cursor to the top of the document with the shift and up arrow combination in order to reach the date. Enter the edit tab line mode using control T. Now, press the right arrow key to move the cursor over to the first tab stop, which is the plus sign on the tab line between 2 and 3. And remove it by pressing the space bar. Let's clear the next tab the same way. Use the right arrow key to get to the tab mark between 3 and 4. Now erase the plus sign by using the space bar. The tab sign between 4 and 5 is the tab we'll use. So, press Enter to lock in this new tab line. You don't need to save it for future reference since it's just a one-shot thing. 
Make sure your edit cursor is at the beginning of the date, like ours is. And press F1, and then the shift and right arrow together. That inserts a hidden tab character in the text. Then press F2, and the date will appear over to the right and line itself up with the tab stop you just set up. There's a whole lot more information on tabs in your superscripts at reference manual, starting on page 33. It's about time we got this letter printed out. Make sure your printer is turned on and loaded with paper and online. Press the key combination control P for print. Now you see the print text options menu. In some ways like the opening options menu you used when you first started typing this letter. Document name is really just for your information, since you can't change it. It tells you what file you are about to print. The paper size of 66 refers to the number of lines on a standard sheet. Just use the down arrow key to get to the line that says pause between pages. Now you would change the yes answer here to N for no if you are using a continuous stack of paper and don't need to stop at each page to change sheets. If you have a letter quality daisy wheel printer like we do, you'll leave it that way. Also, you'll leave P in the method of justification. Now if you're using a dot matrix printer, use the letter M for monospace justification. And the rest of the defaults are okay since we want just one copy and don't want to display the various hidden paragraph and tab characters and window lines are not a problem for this single page letter and we want to start counting our margin from the first column or left edge of the paper so press enter and your printer will spin into action The section in your superscripts at reference manual on printing a document starts on page 63. By now, the printer should be done chattering, so have a look at your completed and formatted letter. Here's another good place to save what you have with Control Q. Do that now. Well. Now you can make superscripts that leap tall files in a single bound and skip over entire words, too. Scrolling and tabs, and now printing out a newly edited file. In the next segment, you'll start on a more complicated word processing chore, a report with more formatting requirements like titles and moving around blocks of text. For now, do the usual rewind and review on this segment of the video before moving on. Oh. Thank you, Ms. Palmdexter. The Fufufnik file, I meant to read that last week. And you know, that's uh, not the kind of moving on I had in mind. this nonsense in the next couple of segments because we have work to... Where's the other guy? I mean, contract calls for both of you. Go get them. Yeah, nice of you to drop by. We have work to do. Welcome back to Compututor and using Superscripts It. The first thing you need for our report to the stockholder is a title, and that's a perfect opportunity to learn a couple of commands. In this report, we'll center all titles and we'll underline and boldface the main title. The subdivisions we'll just underline, and the headings for the columns of statistics will be printed in boldface only. From the superscripts at opening menu, select the O option to open a document. Let's name it Report. So type that in, 
and do that along with the drive identifier so it'll be put on the data disk in drive one. And press enter. Go through the same steps here as you did for the letter. You'll use the same printer and pitch options, and the rest of the default should be okay. When you've got the open document options just the way you want them, press enter to lock them down. Since this is a report and not a Mitfits Glove Company letter, We'll use different margins than the standard company letter, and paragraphs won't be indented. So let's set up a tab line for reports. Use Control T to give control to the ghost cursor. And make sure the left and right margins are at the defaults. They should be unless you've left your machine running between segments instead of rebooting. The cursor is flashing at the indent paragraph marker. So, press the space bar to erase it. Now, press S, and when the program asks you which set of tab symbols this is, call it 3. We will now type the main title, which we need to underline and print in boldface. Press the clear key and then press the hyphen key in the upper right-hand corner of the keyboard. The view mode will come on, and you'll get a symbol like a C in a circle, followed by a hyphen mark. Remember that view mode displays all the hidden codes for paragraphs, and in this case, for underlining as well. If view mode were turned off right now, you just see a hyphen without the C in a circle. That's important because it clues you on where you started the underlining. Superscripts it automatically turns on the view mode when you press the clear key. A lot of people like working in view mode all the time because it gives them a clear idea of what they've got typed into their text, paragraphs and tabs and print commands. We've started underline, but haven't put in the boldface command. So, press clear again and type a plus sign to signify darker print. Now, type out the words Mitfits market analysis in uppercase. It's important to understand that you must now turn off underlining and bold facing, otherwise, all the rest of your text will be printed that way. So again, use the clear hyphen and clear plus sign commands to close out the boldface and underline modes. These types of commands are called toggles, like toggle switches, because they are either on or off. You are now turning them off, and you'll get a second set of print codes with the circle C and plus sign and hyphen mark behind the title. Press Enter now to mark this title as a paragraph. That'll be important when we center it. On page 67 of the Superscripts at Manual, there's a whole section describing the various special printing commands you can use. Now to center the title. It's real easy. No counting spaces like on a typewriter. Superscripts at centers paragraphs at a time, and that's why it was important to mark off this title. Move the cursor back up into the title. Anywhere in the title or paragraph will do when you are centering. Now, hold down the control key and press the letter C at the same time. The title will shift, and the prompt CEN for center will show on the status line, indicating you are in centering mode. We could have pressed control C for center before typing the line, and it would have been centered as you typed it. When you look at the screen, it may look like the line isn't centered, but you have to discount the added symbols on either side of the title that make it possible to do what you're doing. When you print the file, those marks won't be there and the title will be centered. 
Centering is explained on page 23 of the superscripts at reference manual. Press enter twice for spacing. And if you would press the caps key to be in all caps, press it again to get out of all caps mode. Type in the next three paragraphs as you see them on the screen. I'll dictate them to you to help out while we run them by on the screen. Ready? Here we go. This analysis shows projected sales for 1985 and includes estimates for market penetration of gloves in general, comma, and the projected market response in our target homes to the 1985 new model line of sequined and beaded evening gloves. period. Now press the enter key twice to insert a blank line. Moving on, here we go. Market penetration data comes from our own sales force. And from figures supplied by the Glove Manufacturer Association. based in New York, period. Projected market response comes from a marketing study done by Abercrombie Focus Group Services, period. and press the enter key twice. Last paragraph, here we go. Fourth quarter sales figures
our estimates projected from the final sales figures from the first two quarters of 1984. And put a comma after 1984. And some adjustment based on a rising trend of orders going into the third quarter of 1984. And press the period. And now press the enter key twice. Now, look at the table I've put on the screen. This could be a real pain if it wasn't for the tab functions you get in Superscriptsit and a nifty little trick called the tab line. First, let's get the subdivision title out of the way. Basically, you do it the same way you did the main title earlier. Press the caps key now for these titles and tabular labels. Get into center mode by pressing Control C. Use clear and then hyphen, then type the subdivision title, fourth quarter, 1984. Now toggle off the underline with clear hyphen again. Now press enter and everything will be centered. Press enter once more. You're going to create a new customized tab line in the report. Press the control T combination and the ghost cursor will take control. Go through the tab line and remove all the tabs, placing new tabs with the plus sign or the letter T at 3.3 and 4.6 inches and watch the position marker on your status line to make sure you're in the right place. Then get out of the tab mode by pressing enter. Now, type in the headings using a clear plus sign command first to make them all boldface. Glove, model, and press shift right arrow. Units, and press shift right arrow. Gross income. Now, of course, we'll be referring to gross income in millions. Now, close the bold face with the clear plus sign combination, and all the headings are lined up for you. Press the enter key twice for proper spacing. Now, the data lines. Type in the word standard. Then tab over using the shift and right arrow key combination. 
300,000 units we expect to sell in the fourth quarter. And tab again, but this time with the control A combination to do an align tab. This align tab function will line text up on the right or vertically align a column of numbers by lining up all the decimal points. May look a little disjointed, but bear with us. And Fat City, a juicy $1.8 million in sales. So type in a dollar sign and then 1.80. OK, let's press the Enter key for spacing. Now use the same process to finish typing the fourth quarter figures, and you'll see the decimals all lined up in that third column. In the second column for units sold, you have to line up the commas yourself using the space bar. And when you do, you will see little triangles appear if you use the space bar more than once. Don't worry, they won't show up on the printout. Very good. Press the Enter key one more time for spacing. Now, finish typing the tables, laying out the projections for 1985 title with underline and centering commands. The same tab line will be in effect until you change it again, so it will line up the second set of columns. On page 33 in the manual, you'll find the various tab instructions. In the next segment, I think we'll shift the order of some of these paragraphs around. But first, I want to take a moment to show you the search and replace function of Superscriptsit. In a long document, if you wanted to find one particular fact or word, you might have to search through the entire thing and still take a chance on overlooking the very item you need. Superscriptsit will do the looking for you, saving you all sorts of time. First, let's try a global search. That means search the entire document for a particular set of characters. Get to the top of the report by pressing the shift and up arrow combination. Press the control G combination and you get a menu of search and replace options. We want to find a set of characters, so the first blank line should be F 
for find, not D for delete or R for replace. Oh, and use the down arrow key to get to the next line and type in the characters 150,000. Now use the down arrow key again. We have a choice of searching only for complete words or a set of characters. W for word is fine in this case. Now use your down arrow key again. Ignoring the case of the characters means nothing in this situation since they are numbers. So leave the case prompt as Y and use the down arrow key. We are not replacing these characters, so we'll leave that line blank. Oh, and use the down arrow key. And yes, we want to pause after each find. See, if you answered N for no here, superscripts it would simply count the number of times it found 150,000 and would not stop to point out where it found those characters. All right, press enter and superscripts it will shift electronically through the text until it finds 150,000. Press break to get out of search mode. Now use the shift down arrow key combination to get to the bottom of the file. Instructions for global searching are on page 57 of the superscripts it reference manual. There's another way to do a search, and in this case, you can look backwards through a document without first going to the top of the file. Press a combination of an up or left arrow and the letter S for search. And you'll get a prompt on the status line asking for what you would like to find, the search string. You'll find 150,000 already in the search string prompt. So you can press enter and superscripts it will look for the previous occurrence of 150,000. And there you are, back in the same place. A couple of notes about searching. You must get the search string or phrase exactly right, spaces and all. The only exception is if you tell superscripts that you want to ignore the case of the letters, a feature you have under the global search option. Return to the top of the file again with the shift up arrow combination. And get back into global search with the control G command combination. This time on the options menu, Select R for replace. And 150,000 is already in the string to find blank. So indicate a search by W for word. The case of the characters doesn't matter since they are numbers. And for replace with, type 160,000. I remember that the consultant projected a colder winter for this year, and that means an improvement in sales. And you do want to pause after each find so you can double check before changing the text. Press enter, and the superscripted program puts you back in the 150,000 location again. This time with a prompt at the bottom indicating this is the first finding of the set of characters and asking whether you want to replace them or not, or cancel the command, or just go ahead and replace this and all the rest of the occurrences without any further asking. Answer Y for yes, and superscripts it will keep looking for the next occurrence of the string of characters 150,000. You end up at the bottom of the report document again with no further findings of 150,000, and a status line report of one replaced. Now, press break to get out of the search and replace function. If you want more details on the search and replace function, check the superscripts at manual beginning on pages 44 and 57. We've had some jokes working out a market strategy for the Mitfits Glove Company, but also you've picked up some very advanced skills on how to set up a columnar table using superscripts at centering titles, printing commands, and searching and replacing bits of text. Let's print out the report as it sits right now before moving on to some even slicker techniques. Save the file using Control Q.
Now, press R to get back to the file. You should do this, or control W periodically, while you're working away, just in case of a power failure or some other problem. At least you will then have on disk the latest version possible of your document. And now, press the control P command. Work your way through the print text options. Now, the only one that might need changing is the pause between pages option if you're using a continuous stream of paper. If so, you want to put in N for no in that blank. Otherwise, you're ready to go. I'm sure after you become more familiar with Superscripsit, you'll develop your own style of working and will want to use the system setup feature to change these defaults on the various opening and searching and printing option menus. There's a section all about that in the Superscripts at Reference Manual, starting on page 93. And now, press Enter so you can see your fancy format techniques and the boldface and underlined type. You deserve a break. In just these five segments, you've learned almost all the major concepts you'll need to use Superscripsit for document processing. Some of it has been a bit complicated, though, so rewind and review this segment to make sure you've got everything down pat. Then, move on to the last segment of Compututor and using Superscripsit. Oh, thank you, Ms. Palmdexter. Appreciate my phone messages here. Hang on, you two. We need to talk. You boys have got to stop being so competitive with each other. The business at hand for us is teaching our friends to use superscripsit. Now, settle down. Agreed? Good. I'm so glad we have these meaningful discussions and agree on these points because it simply demonstrates my authority in the firm. <laughs> See, another possibility is you could always write her a real nice note on superscripts it, huh? Right? Not, not now, though. Not now. You know what else you could do? Run out to a card shop and get her some really nice cards, huh? That would probably... Not, not now. Not now. Now. Now, welcome back to Compututor and using superscripts it. Taking a look at that printout, I can see a few changes we should make. And I think it's a good chance to learn a couple of final tricks with superscripts it. First, there's something they used to call cut and paste in the old typewriter days. It involved getting involved with a glue pot and scissors and a photocopying machine to try to get paragraphs reshaped into a different order. I think we should move the third paragraph up above the second paragraph. And let's make sure the tables appear on a page by themselves. Now, move the cursor to the start of the first word of the third paragraph. you're going to mark a block to get ready to move it. Good. You've already learned about blocks from when we adjusted the blocks in the letter to fix up margins. Mark this point with Control S for start of the block. And now, Move the cursor down to the start of the line following the blank line after the paragraph, which in this case is the line containing fourth quarter 1984. And mark the end of the block with Control E. The brackets in reverse video mark out where you've defined the block so you can be sure you've got exactly what you want. Use Control B to put superscripts it in the block action mode. Now that you've defined the block, select the letter M for the move action. Now that'll save this block on the disk and remove it from this section of the text.
Now move the cursor to the first character of the second paragraph. Good. And now recall the block by pressing Control R. The disk drive whirs and superscripts it recalls the scrap of text that used to be the third paragraph and reinserts it as the new second paragraph, sliding the old second paragraph down into third position. You can use these block moves for a lot of things. You can mark an unwanted block and then delete it. And you already know about using blocks to hyphenate and search. You can also freeze a block of text so it can't be edited, or copy a chunk of text, or double or triple space a single space document. There's an old newspaper expression called boilerplate. That means a piece of copy or text that doesn't change. For example, if you have some personal stationery with your name and address printed on any page, you might refer to that as boilerplate. Well, you can create a boilerplate file by programming one of the number keys on the top row of the keyboard to spit out a sequence of characters on demand, anything from a frequently used address to a sequence of commands for frequently performed tasks. Get to the paragraph sign just above the subhead that reads fourth quarter report. Press the control U combination for user. We'll do something simple just to demonstrate the possibilities. Press the number four and type a whole row of equal signs. Good. Now press the Enter key. This is just to visually set off these tables. And now type the Control U combination again to let Superscripts it know that you are done programming that key. Move down through the text to the bottom of the tables section. Good. Now press Control 4. And instead of several dozen keystrokes for a row of equal signs, you've done it with two keys. It's a great time saver, and you'll find lots of details and suggestions on how to use it in your Superscripts at Reference Manual on page 100. But these tables, as I mentioned, really should be on a different page, set apart. Go to the very beginning of the first row of equal signs. Now press Control N, and an upside down V will appear. That's a forced page break. That means there will always be a page break at this point in the text. Normally, superscripts it will automatically break documents into standard length pages, but this is one way to override that function. On our letter, we don't need page numbers because it's only one page long, but this report should have page numbers. That means using a footer meaning a special piece of text that appears at the foot of every page. Hold down any arrow key and type F to request a footer page. A status line prompt asks if you want it printed on even or odd numbered pages. A useful feature if you're processing a document that will be printed on both sides of a page, so you can always have a page number on the outside edge of the sheet. Select either one, in this case, E. When only one footer page has been created, Superscripts it puts that footer on all pages, even or odd. Press Enter twice to put a couple of blank lines between the text of the report and the page number. Get into center mode with Control C and type page, then a space. Now, press clear. Then type a lowercase p, which tells Superscripts it to insert the page number, and a circle C and P appear on the screen. That positions the page number. Use any arrow key in L for leave, and the footer will be recorded, and a prompt will ask which line you'd like in your document. 
The number already in the blank is so you can return to your old spot, a sort of place marker. So press enter to go back home. The details on numbering pages and using footers and headers for all sorts of purposes are on page 72 of the Superscripsit reference manual. I want to show you an important part of Superscripsit I mentioned in the last segment called System Setup. It'll change the default answers in a number of the option menus. In this case, the print menu. Type Control Q to save your file and get back to the opening menu. Now select S for System Setup. You get a new menu that lists, among other things, P for printer options. So press P. Under print text options, put an N if you're using continuous paper or leave a Y if you're not. Now press enter to lock the defaults in place. and press break. You return to the opening menu and select R for return. When the report comes up on your screen, press Control P. And there you see that with your system setup utility, you have changed the defaults. And instead of typing out responses, you have created the standard to fit your system. So you can just press enter to print out the report. There are more details on system setup starting on page 93 of the Superscripsit reference manual. You should save this version of the document so that you can practice with it later. You've done it. And I congratulate you. You have made terrific progress in these past six segments. You've learned how to format your data diskettes, install and load your superscripts at diskette, create a document, store your document, print your document, and reformat your document. You've learned the basics of the cut and paste procedures that have made word processing as indispensable as the microcomputer itself. And the more you use superscripts, it, the more you will learn about its many special functions. It will become very easy now for you to refer to the handy superscripts and owner's manual that came with your program. But just what you have learned so far is enough to allow you to do what Das Mitz and I have accomplished. We've set up our report and letter, and in doing so, we're not only keeping the stockholders of the Mitfits Glove Company informed, but we're also creating a filing system that will continue to serve us for a long time to come. We hope you've had as much pleasure and success as we've had learning how to use Superscripsit with Compututor. Oh, thank you, Miss Palmdexter. Some of our printouts from earlier on, I appreciate that. Hey, by the way, did you get over to the card shop and... Oh, you did? You did? What'd you get? What'd you get? I'd like to see. Oh, isn't that pretty? Very nice. Anything else? Oh, yeah? What? what? Oh, that's very nice. Very nice sentiment. Very nice. Anything else? What? Aha, uh -huh, uh -huh, some old friends of ours. Hey, that's terrific. Wait a minute, should Mickey's big hand be on? Oh, well, I guess it's all right. <laughs>